Today is June 1st, year 2019, and um, this is Mijanol Raman from Toronto. Um, as usual, um, the second part of the video series financial planning uh, the tacit knowledge the tacit knowledge for financial planning and this was presentatorship video series number two and this is possibly video number four or five Um, now, this, this video series especially uh, focuses on the mid-sized to large corporations. And my first few videos really talks about the, um, the um, a, a bit of um, a broadened mind about uh, about technology and uh, the, the, the destructive part of it. Uh, where can this destructive technology could lead us to? What this can take us to? Now, keeping that in mind, um, we do have to plan at somewhere. Um, now, depending on the business, so now let's assume um, in my first book, financial freedom, a fictional financial plan. Um, I had, um, the book was a bit about the, um, mostly about the professional corporation, uh, meets um, a small to medium sized business. And um, it mostly dealt with the uh, personal financial side of it. And, and, and the corporation, integration of personal and the professional um, corporation, the owner of the professional corporation, um, the tax planning, the investment planning, and the comprehensive financial comprehensive financial planning for the professional, like doctors, dentists, uh, uh, architects, um, any other professions that actually fully depend on the self-employment in self-employment. Uh, structure, or they are income through self-employment, or the um, through the um, through the other through commission, or um, or not not salary, not not a, not a regular method of salary earning. Anyway, now um, the second part of the tacit knowledge video series is it deals with the large corporation to mid size to large. And at some point, you're going to run into a problem. You will see the accounting statements of these corporations for the mid size or large corporation. You will see uh, the first section of the balance sheet. You will see the um, asset part, right? And the second part of it, you will see liability and shareholders' equity. Now, the asset, it it's very often it's very straightforward, but the, as you as you move towards the liability and um, the shareholders' equity section, it gets slightly complicated, and there's a lot of notes not disclosure that as a corporation you would have to provide that to the readers of your financial statements. And the IFRS is completely um, very careful about the very, uh, very discreet and very open, uh, very uh, accepting towards the, very accommodating towards the providing for the notes disclosure to the readers of the financial statements. Now, the, remember I said uh, on my first book, the end users are always, always at stake. So, now, who are your end users as a company? Now, most often it is your client. It is your client. If you're 
If you're in manufacturing chain business, it might be your client. If you're in a retail large business, it could be your consumers. Or if it is a um, service industry, um, it could be a computer company, it could be, for example, um, a, te a technological company, a cell phone company, a cell phone manufacturing company, or it could be service provider of the cell phone, or it could be um, um, a technology, um, could be a company like Bombardier who makes aircraft, or it could be anything, the service side of it, that provides both the service and the product as well. Hybrid companies. Now, on the balance sheet, you'll see the liability gets more complex. One of the problems this mid sized company run into uh, after a certain number of years uh, in the operation, um, they would want to expand the revenue. The revenue needs to be grown. It, it, it needs to continuously be improved. The, the, the revenue, the earnings has to be, the earnings has to grow. The, the external earning, right, has to be really at a larger stake, right? Uh, than the uh, than the internal group. So often the um, don't quote me on it, but often the internal growth um, and the external growth of the company. Now, I don't get into the the growth side of the company, but I make it very simple. So let's say the the revenue has to be um, in a, in a growing trend. So that, the, so that the profit and also your expense can be at an optimal level, right? Um, um, the, the, there's, there's a saying that if you don't spend, then you cannot possibly earn something. So to run an operation, you'd have to spend something to the um, towards that earnings, right? So um, that that. That earnings, right? That earnings has to, that is thing that is that expense account has to be justified to earn that income, right? So if you're earning, um, you know, fifty dollar and um, just to give an example, and uh, or fifty million dollar, and you're, you're spending forty million dollar or sixty million dollar, and leaves you very little bit of profit market or loss, right? So. Um, that that's not a, that may not be an optimal level of ex expenditure, right? So often, these mid-sized companies they would have a problem with the 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 operating side of the business because they're growing, right? Often their internal growth uh, might be larger than the external growth, or, or their revenue could be slightly at the at the you know very very um, first you know first five to ten years. The revenue might be, or, or or could be three years, first three years. The revenue could be, or the uh, revenue could be really low, especially if you go to research and development side of the industry, where you'd see the um, the revenues are really really low. They have a lot of financing in that. Uh, those are the company often um, becomes an issue for the investing. Um, decision that you have to make before you make the uh, if you're an investor, so you'd have to make a right decision whether the company has the right prototypes of. Uh, at some point, uh, I will probably in my in my second book for the financial planning. Um, uh, it's called financial freedom. Um, financial freedom. Um, entrepreneurship. And uh, in, in that book, I'm going to address the, the IPOs, the initial public offerings, and, and the how they actually, the, the, um, the, um, the readers of that financial statement, so the, how they perceive and how they, what they really look at, will probably go through the forms. The, the security exchange and the commission, SEC, SEC for the US, so you will see that they would have different kind, whole bunch of forms they fill out, right? They, they provide financial.
particular statements, you know, this project, the, the governing of the corporations, and so many things that you come across. But before we get there, I want to address something that the, the these mid-sized corporations, they have problems, they face a lot of problems. And one of the problems is actually financing the corporation, right? And how they optimally finance this, this corporation so that the, the revenue, the, ex, the expense, the cost of borrowing is actually at an optimal level, right? And this is the biggest challenge nowadays in the market, the cost of borrowing the capital, the cost of borrowing the, or financing a project is becoming uh, an issue, right? So they want to be profitable. Um, so if you see the, uh, and if we, if we look at the clothing industry in, in, in Canada, uh, they went through a major uh, change from, uh, and they, because of the need, they diverted the proportion to, from Canada to China or Cambodia or Vietnam or Bangladesh or Pakistan, India, South America, Brazil, and so forth, so many other places, right? So, now they had to survive, right? They, they had to, they had to utilize the, 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 they wanted to make sure that the, the proportion is profitable, right? May have been, there may have been, you know, there might be other incentives uh, going there. Uh, even though the Canadian government or the, the there were other incentives to be uh, to operating op operation or having a manufacturing company in Canada, right? So, but often they drift away from that. And at some point, also this is my personal experience. At some point, I also noticed is that the in China, at some point, the industry. The, the, um, it's um, suppressed, or uh, it, it, the, the cost, the operation cost, the, op the cost for the, the operation or operating a manufacturing company in China was becoming more expensive. And, and, and as a result, as a result, you'd see that the, the cost of it was it, it was getting more expensive. Often they were then they were diverting, and often you will see when it comes to international politics and economics, and you will see there's a lot of lot of quota system, lot of um, 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 lot of restrictions, lot of um, um, the, the the foreign exchange. The, every parameter comes to a big play. Um, you'd have to make a right decision to 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 um, to open an operation into a different country where and by using an, an optimal uh, assuming that you have a, you know you, you have a, a higher cost to borrow the capital but you want to reduce your portion cost going into another country but you also have to keep in mind this was the issue. This was one of the major facts in, in manufacturing garments industry that the cost of borrowing was slightly higher, and they were offsetting that going into a third world countries, producing. Um, even often, the a lot of chemical companies they are actually you know, offshoring their business. Even actually, if you see the lot of large corporations nowadays, technological corporations, they also outsource, but. But they maintain some quality, um, very strong quality, the, the production quality. But let's not get to the quality side of it, but rather have the discussion of cost-effective business and cost-effective financing, optimal, optimal debt financing, or optimal the, the cost of borrowing capital. Right? How do we, how do we really, you know, grow a company? Where it's you know where are you gonna go? You have mid-sized company running into, for example, a company ABC is running in you know is born in Canada and developed uh, you know hundred million dollar revenue. Um, it's a very small number to give them the you know uh, global you know global 
uh, uh, you know, global view, but um, so um, they want to grow their business and they would have to go outside of Canada or they want to, they want to make a decision what they want to go with, where the market need, the niche market for the product, where the customers are, right? So you'd have to make the decision, um, well, the, the, the oil, gasoline you know, plays a big role in, 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 in any industry, any manufacturing company, any industry where that requires the, the raw material, right? And, and that, the, the raw material, the, 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 the fuel is becoming a big challenge, right? Um, because of the product system, because of the uh, various restrictions, various policies that are placed to control the pricing, to control the production, to become the profitable, the, the sustain the economy, sustain the, the environment, right? So there's still a lot of things there. So like I said, a large core portion, a mid-sized core portion needs a lot of expertise on the board, on table. And you will see when, when you become a financial partner for these corporations, now your job, you know, you probably, if you're a financial partner for a large corporation, you probably by nature an account and or you could have, you know, you could have the accounting finance background, you'd have your investment side of it, you'd have the risk hedging strategy, insurance side, and so many things, you'd also have law designations and so forth. You probably do, you know, have certifications in law. You might be also, you might have accounting finance background, you might have financial planning background, you might have um, legal background, legal, you know, a, a legal de degree, perhaps a JD or LLM, or you might have a CA, CPA, you might have the, you know, CIM. You know, there are a lot of designations, but or you might be a CFA and, and or CFP, certified financial product, whatever the nature is. But at the end of the at the end of the day, you'd have to make the right decision for your client. And the right decision is that the understanding the financial statements, and that's the key point. Where they're running short, where there's a problem with the financial statements, what gives them the 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 you know, quick, what gives them the insecurities in their heart, what, why the management really struggling, you know, you'd have to see through that, right, so often the corporation, they would hire, um, you know, advisors to guide them through, they would have a board, you know, board of directors, they would have account, you know, outsource their accounting department, outsource their financing department, they would have legal advisors, but, but you might, you might also work as a consultant for a corporation and where you might probably say, well, you know, you can also, um, you know, there are consultants, they actually fully um, help corporations to grow um, through uh, capital restructuring or public capital um, financing or um, helping them to, to gather capital or in the cost or reducing reduction of the cost of borrowing, restructuring, margin, and so forth, right? So you would have a lot of areas as a, you could, you know, you could become a consultant or you could be, become their um, accountant or, or, or advisors, whatever you call yourself. Um, you know, whatever your designation you put yourself, or you could call their corporate lawyer, whatever you want to call yourself. It really, at the end of the day, it boils down, you, really have to understand their operation very well and their financing, the, the liability and the how the, the, the how the capitals are raised. So which is the liability and the shareholder equity. Now this is the, the the very, very important sector of a of a, of a financial statement for a mid sized to large corporation that is um, that is about to go to public. Or wanted to finance, or want to restructure that debt, or want to merge because of the you know um, the strain, because of the challenges that industry are facing, or there might be synergy that produces some merging from two, you know two companies or three companies together, 
um, they might be often you'd see that the buyover between insurance companies, often you'd see it banked by some other bank, quite often you'd see that the bank, you know, they, they merge together, right, um, securities companies, trust companies, and you see this a lot of, lot of laddering, a lot of layering, a lot of uh, merging and mergers and acquisitions in, in, in this financial industry. But at the end of the day, this is all happening for one, 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 very one good reason, one important reason, and that is to, to raise the capital, to raise the capital at an optimal cost, at a really reasonable price, so that they could, they could grow, um, they could grow efficiently, they could grow their company, they could ex you know, they could extend their operations. They could ex they could go with uh, with with a lot of strength, a lot of a uh, lot of flexibility in their in in, in their in their um, um, in their decision making. So if your cost of borrowing is really high, then you're going to have a problem uh, with the with the you know, uh, with the competitions, right? So if your cost of borrowing is really high, then the product cost is going to be higher. So let's say if you're producing um, a vacuum machine, so let's say for example, or, or, or you know, um, for example, it could be a board like this, or it could be um, the um, a chair, a table, whatever you're producing. If your cost of borrowing is really high, or the the capital raise the cost of raising the capital is, capital is really high, then you're going to have a problem um, uh, specifically for that project, right? So then you'd have you'd have your um, uh, you know a lot of returns, a lot of you know a lot of um, um, you know cal number crunching. You're going to go through that, but at the end of the day, the the, the final the, the bottom line is that the you need to produce a product at an optimal, at a competitive cost, at a competitive price. Right? That's where you need that, a competitive pricing. And that's the key point. If you're not, if you're not coming up with the right product at the right price, um, then it's most likely you would probably gonna have a going concern issue and and often often the big investors they would see through and often you know um often when it's on a, and, and one of my expert one of my expertise coming from the um, certain business industry is buying liquidated stuff and buying something at a lower cost so you know the investor as an investor my mind is different than the others, right? So, or as 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 a, as a businessman, my my viewpoint is buying at a, at a very very low cost, right? And often you see portfolio managers they would buy liquidated investment, but they would have to do their homework whether that liquidated company or the company is about to go bankrupt or buying a piece of, you know, buying a piece of a corporation, discontinued a portion from a you know another corporation. Whether it's worthwhile, right? They have to make the decision. But these are discontinued, these are liquidated investments. You know, your cost could be, you know, the ten cents a dollar, and, and and you could probably earn a great profit, right? But you'd have to do your homework. You'd have to, you'd have to have a good team in place to run that operation, and to to restructure it, to to get a whole different look. But the idea is that the, your product. Cost has to be an optimal level to to be sustainable in the long run or in the short run in at any market at any equilibrium point. So, if if you're below the equilibrium, depending on the you know if your if your if, you, if your cost is below the equilibrium level or or or, or, or a certain Maybe I should say that if your cost is the average market price, lesser, lesser than the average cost of the market, the same product in the market. So the average cost of your 
cost of your vacuum machine is $50 in the market, but if your cost is $40, right, then you're profitable. But if your cost is higher than the, the, the that, that average market value, what the equilibrium, what, what, the, what the market equilibrium is, if it is higher, if your cost is $60, now, you know, you're going to have a lesser profit, lesser revenue. I mean, because your cost is higher, you'd have to, you know, you'd have to make profit to pay off that debt or, you know, to maintain that required rate of return for your project, right? To, to earn the return, you might, you may have promised, you may have financed the product through debt financing, through bond or, or through you know, so many kinds of financing, or probably, you know, capital issuing stock, or bonds, or, but whatever the nature is, you know, however way you, you produce that, you know, whatever financing scope was used to produce that product, you need to get to, you need to keep your cost down at, at all levels. Now, now why talking about so you're going to see that, in it. so you need to understand the operation. So first thing I look at it, the corporation, the balance sheet, and what the, the, the liability looks like, what the shareholders equity looks like. So I was actually analyzing an IPO, um, at, at IPO, actually quite a few of them, and one of them I noticed something, a, a corporation um, in the United States, uh, they were rejected by the, um, the, um, the, um, I believe it was the um, uh, Security Exchange Commission for the. Um, um, uh, don't, uh, anyway, um, they, they were the form. Uh, I don't have the, for the, the paperwork here, but obviously it's going to be my second book. Part of it is there. So, um, for a second book for the financial freedom, the entrepreneurship. Um, so, so part of that discusses the IPOs and, and capital raising, and you're going to see that. That the um, the this corporation, this particular corporation, was rejected because they couldn't. Um, their operation was um, was you know suffering, right? So they the final. They had a lot of lot of lot of shareholders equity. There's a you know less liability. The assets are there, but the revenue wasn't really. There, the profit margin wasn't really there. They had a lot of, you know, capital sitting there, sitting on a lot of shareholders' equity, but you know, it's sufficient. But they weren't, um, they weren't um, uh, approved to go to public, right? So um, to to raise fund to the, um, the the you know selling their stock on the um, in the public market, the um, on the publicly traded. Um, 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 by going public or you know by trading publicly, so they couldn't get that. Right? They couldn't have the financial statements. They couldn't have the corporations approved. So you you see there are so many of those. If often you could probably see this in the medical industry that uh, um, I've seen corporations that that produce prototypes of different um, of formulas or or, or medical treatments or or or, 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 or Capsules or, or you know, uh, or therapy, therapeutic products, right? And and um, or, or or you know, um, different services. But the problem they run into is that the this research and development company uh, they spend a lot of money. Um, um, they, they, they raise a lot of money through the the IPO selling. But when you, when you see the product line, so you have to see. Who is actually in the research team? So your skills comes to you know play of understanding who is actually running this mine. Who, who are the who are the you know where their their value comes from? Right? What what this company be able to come up with the final product? If they can, then you know you probably as an investor, if you are investing to that company, and if you are the financial planner for or the the auditing firm for this particular corporation, you know, or from the advisors, accounting advisors, or it could be the, the financial guy for this, or could be the lawyer for this corporation. You're gonna have to see that the see through that the whether the product will be successful if we take this company to the public, 
right? Because you might be also liable to to a certain degree of not um, understanding because at the end of the day, your due diligence may be cost of your due diligence really not only towards the 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 corporation, the hiring company, you also owe a due diligence to public. So let's say, for example, if you're an auditor, then then you would have to issue an, an, an independent auditing report, right? So you'd have to, it has to be non-qualified auditing report, or or you know it could be you know um, some sort of um, opinionated. You know there might be some opinion could be qualified, um, but but in whatever the scope is, you'd have to come up, you'd have to do your best to make sure that the the opinion that you're providing. To, to that particular you know financial statements that that's you that your, your your work is reliable the investors can rely on your work and if you're the investor if you're the if you're the if you're selling that well that comes a lot later but but the company actually go through a lot of planning a scope a lot of planning mechanism to get to actually to get to a step where they need you know, before they walk through the, the before the file those forms, before the file those forms to, to the the security exchange commissions, or you know, um, I don't I don't I, you know top of my head, I don't have any books here. I don't have any you know notebooks here. I don't have any pens here. Actually, I do have a pen in my bag, but I don't have much in my pocket. But it's you know everything I'm speaking as you know from my you know from my knowledge and um, so, but. Like I said, the um, you know this, these are the things that you're going to run into. That the if you're an investor, if, if you are you know if you're if you're selling this company securities or their stock, then you'd have to be very very careful about um, uh, you know understanding the financial statements, understanding this auditing report. So my first book actually really talks about the financial freedom of fiction or financial plan. If you are the investment advisor, if you are the financial planner for this, you know, then you really need to meet, read that book because it's really amazing. Um, from, from my coming from my maybe, you know, I'm bragging a little bit. Excuse me for that. You know, maybe I should have bragged. But if you feel that, you know, that you know, my 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 my, my books, my opinions bring some value for you to understand the financial statements. Please feel free to read it. Um, you know, it's really reasonably priced as well. I'm not trying to market the book here, but but you know, or you could you know simply analyze the financial statements and go through this. You know, um, the what are the shenanigans they they put the the into the financial statements, right? Because every morning, actually, uh, you know, before the company goes to public. These, you know, professionals really work for the corporation they were hired. They are, they are, you know, they all this prof as a professional. They have a duty of care to public, right? But they also have, you know, they also have that interest taking this company to the next level. So sometimes they are, um, you, you'd have to keep your eye open for this. If you're a security security advisor or probably you know investment advisor or probably financial planner. You know, you have CFC or CIS or whatever, you know, you should have a case, or CIM, whatever the case is. You would have to see that, you know, where the Shanigan lies, right? So you be, you know, you should be able to read that, you know, just even before you even get to the notes disclosures and by looking at the numbers, you know, the, the, the ratios should be able to foresee that, you know, where the problem is, where the shenanigans comes from. Now, this is why the value comes from, right? So, where are the shenanigans? Where are the hiding? Where the loopholes are? Where are the problems are, right? So, if we could find the problem, then we could see, well, is it worth buying it? Or is it worth actually negotiating it? Right? So, often you'll see a lot of company goes to public and they, they become a victim of hostile buyover, like hostile takeover. So that because the, the, the underwriter of this, the, this, the, the IPOs, whoever actually underwrite the product or the, the securities, they really didn't do their due diligence really you know, effectively. As a result, the IPO may have uh, overpriced or underpriced or, or whatever the, the cost is, it wasn't properly priced. And 
or there may be significant fall that came out shortly after the IPOs uh, were approved, which can happen at any time. But uh, but also there's a lot to deal with the market psychology. But at some point, at some point, this market psychology will stop playing. But whether your your success, your 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 planning, your your foreseeability to take the company to a next level, your vision, your mission, your 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 decision making ability, uh, your 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 understanding your business will become actually the the punch point, the the stroking the the, the, the stroking points or the outline or the headlines of your of your it becomes a vision. This is what people see. So let's let's have an example. I didn't want to take a big powerful name because I want it to be as neutral as possible. You know, when you're buying an Apple product, you're really seeing their vision, where they're taking the company to, right? The company straight off with a very simple cell phone, very simple, you know, Mac computer. It's been a long time during the market, but but if you, you can see their vision is where the leading, where the leading us to, where they're taking us to. They're making the the technology so adapted to to us. It could be. I don't want to talk. You know, I don't want to specifically talk about Apple, but there could be other companies. There, you know, there are so many LG. There, um, uh, you know, um, uh, what else? Uh, Samsung and so forth. There are so many others. But I don't want to take one particular. You know, and you can also go back to look at the BlackBerry. And I wanted to, um, uh, for some reason, um, they are actually. Um, we can see. The, the destructive part of the technology, right? How people are suffering. You know, you know, the food could be the food whoever foresee what the what the need, what's going to happen, right? What is they should be able to see the product. They should be able to produce a product, right? That has the demand, that has the ability to to survive in the market, that has the ability to you know, meet the expectations of their client customers, right? Now, now you know, um, at once upon a time, the BlackBerry was a giant for the, I don't want to bring up this name, but um, they were really, you know, really great in the CPD side of the business, and it's really, it was amazing that, you know, um, um, so is, you know, so is the other companies as well, but we are taking their names, but um, I wanted to point this out, that the, you should be able to see that as a financial planner or, 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 or an investment advisor or the underwriter for this product or the IPOs or the whatever you're doing for this or auditor, whatever you're doing, you should be able to see through the financial statements as you can see through, as you can, um, as I'm speaking to you, I, I mean, I, uh, um, maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe I shouldn't, again, I don't want to get into a, um, a bragging point, but I think we we all have to see we all have to see it very clearly a clear picture right a clear vision um, that you know I can see through what's in front of me right I can see these are my hands I can see how many fingers that I can I can see my my you know my hands are very you know it's it's very clear vivid right you should be able to see the financial statements. In in, in in a simple second that the you know in just just without you know without even before you go to the notes obviously you'd have to read the notes this go to that's where the main things happening that's where all those you know integrities are that's where all those shenanigans taking place but before you get to that you'd have to have the idea about this company right um, so so you'd have to really understand the the underlying objective is for putting the mission and vision. Where are they going from here? That's the first video I made. Where are you going? Who are you end users? Why are you taking the company to? Who are you selling to? What are you are selling to them? Right? And that's the key point. And and whatever you are doing, whatever professional you are, you know, you know, 
be a law in here. It should be a financial partner, as mentioned. It could be an underwriter. It could be um, an auditor. It could be an external auditor. It could be an internal auditor. It could be anybody. It could be any professional. It could be even the risk, the, 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 um, uh, I don't know the address, it could be the, um, um, Actually, it could be so many things. It could be any profession that you know um, and that that brings a value to these corporations, to this corporation that is about to go public or raise you know need to raise the capital, or you know if you're buying for the investor, right? If you're representing representing an institution or uh, an institution who actually invest money. Or, or it could be a portfolio manager in the mutual fund. It could be, uh, or it could be a, um, you know, large. It could be a large investment uh, investment advisor, or you know, very, you know, with a very big, um, you know, ability to purchase power, right? The, the purchasing power. So if you have this purchasing power, you should be able to see through where the, you know, where the opportunities are. Now, every one of us would have different viewpoints. We would have each of us. Depending on our goal, depending on our profession, we, we would each would have our own goal. As an investment advisor, or as a, as a security, um, um, as an investment advisor, you probably have a goal to buy at a lower cost for your client. As an underwriter for an IPO or, or, or whatever the product is, um, your goal is to ensure that the the um, the product is priced correctly. It is not overpriced, underpriced. It you know it reflects the right value. Um, so you know you'd have to do your due diligence to make sure that uh, if you're the auditor, then you'd have to make sure that the um, the opinion that you provided is not biased. It's independent, right? So um, you know at the end of the day, we all. All of us, every professional, owes to someone uh, a fiduciary duty, right? And and that is the recognition. And I'm not a lawyer, and uh, maybe I have to be, you know, be very careful producing a statement on the legal side. And you'd have to excuse me if any at any circumstances I have provided legal um, advice. You'd have to excuse me, and I'd have to omit that. Um, and, and I'm not a lawyer, and you know, do not invest based on the discussion uh, of this video. Uh, you would have to have a professional, a team of professions, professionals on your on your side to to understand, you know, whatever your goal is, whatever you're doing. Either you are a business owner of that large or mid-sized corporation, or you are the shareholders, or you are the manager or CEO of that. Corporation, or you are um, you are a mutual fund you know um, manager, or you're a portfolio manager, or um, or you could be a, an institutionalized um, an institution who actually buys um, wholesale uh, investment, right? Uh, um, so you know they their their goal is to um, to to create 